Hello, Goranges are on view yet again, this time for our sale on the 9th of August. So I thought we'd come in a strong room, have a look. I mean, under that glass counter is, is all the jewellery and watch lots that are going to be in the sale. So there's lots 1775 to 1849. It's about a good sort of 75 plus lots. So had a rummage in there, see what uh, Roger's been up to. And uh, picked out a few things to show you, really. So in, in lot order, if possible, because we like to try and be a little bit organised. Um, we start with this, lot 1776. I mean, always promising, isn't it? A nice leather box of quality. Now inside, don't know whether those earrings started life there. We look at the sort of marks underneath and the jury's out on that. But there we are, nine carat gold and white opal, drop earrings, 100 to 120. Seems reasonable enough, doesn't it? 1776, what else do we have? We have a nine carat gold Vesta case. So what is a Vesta case, someone asked me. It's a case for matches. Your early matches were somewhat unstable, sort of think Swan Vesta, but even less safe and they would rub together and set your pocket on fire. So people carried their matches in a little metal case, often silver or base metal. But this is a poshy, this is nine carat gold. And you struck the match at the bottom and they were so sort of ready to burn that they, they'd light up very easily. That's 1782, two to 300 pounds. If your initials are T, A, then you're really in luck. Um, otherwise, what else have we got? Nice little fob seal here. Lot 1784, yellow metal overlaid. I mean, I think that's sort of us saying it's a thin coating of gold over some metal. And um, there's a there's a um, monogram underneath. And you can see a little join there where it's sort of been joined up. So that's sort of honest. I think that's around 1830 in date, probably. Lot 1784, a few little rings. They are, that really is Diddy, isn't it? We need the microscope for that. But very bright, nice, bright, friendly stones. 150 to 200 or something a little bit more blingy slightly brighter anyway a bit different that lot 1795 brilliant cut is the circular cut stone with baguette cut those long rectangular ones around it estimate two to three hundred seems okay elsewhere going up in budget somewhat um cartier um sort of you know uh, in the classic cartier tradition but probably sort of 1980s or 90s um, early 1990s, Rog said, 18 karat gold Cartier, sort of twin leopard type ring. That is in at 1,000 to 1,500 pounds, fully signed up for Cartier. And then these Cartier sort of C hoop earrings in, I imagine, 18 karat white gold, heavily diamond set. Pretty big thing, so you just need a good ear to carry those off. Lot 1805, estimate three to 4,000 probably would be in the fine sale normally but there we are the vendor wants to get them sold so we'll, we'll try and oblige otherwise a few other bits we'll have about a couple of watches that's rather smart isn't it 1853 if that was a men's watch a men's size that would be very saleable because it's a ladies watch the ladies don't seem to be quite so concerned with vintage watches it's, it's far less 150 to 2 and another ladies watch here again nice box we opened it up the original jaeger box and there's a nine carat gold 1960s watch. Um, you know, simple, straightforward, plain, circular dial. Looks like it could do with a bit of a clean that dial. I'm sure Roger's tested to see where it's going. It's all nice though, quite a lot of gold there. Estimate 350 to 450. So there we go. Some little temptations for you. Plenty more of other bits of jewellery in there to look at. We'll go and have a look in the room, see what else is going on. So here we are, back in the smalls room and uh, looking as tidy as ever. Uh, how about samplers? Should we talk samplers? I don't know. Why not? Lot 392. What I like about that is it's got a tiger, which is kind of fun. Even in 1836, a tiger must have been a fairly exotic animal. Um, it's lost an eye. It's looking a little bit pale, but um, but kind of fun that. There's, that's 392, if you like tigers in your samplers. Uh, and then I saw another one over here. Um, Alice Wood ended this work. In 1736, there we go, 100 years earlier than the other one. My God, poor old Alice having to stitch all that lot. But there we are, lot 375. Not the most commercial because it's got verse and alphabet and numbers and doesn't have tigers jumping over the moon or anything like that. And it's a bit stained, but there we go. You, you, you pay your money, you take your choice with samplers. As with all this, the, the fine antiques, I need to say stuff we get here. Uh, how about that though? That's nice, 349. 1930s sort of deco-ish I mean could be a bit more stylized but rather lovely look the two sea lions in sort of silver spelter sort of soft metal marble base that's kind of fun lot 349 
otherwise what else can we find going around when well, it's all here as usual um a bit of dalton now i think dalton slightly this stoneware stuff has slightly picked up it, it really did fall into the doldrums um in recent years but this is a bit more stylish isn't it we look we see this sort of art nouveau feel to it so we think let's have a look underneath and there you get es monogram that's eliza simmons so she's not as good as Tinworth, money-wise, but Eliza had a good hand and a good eye. And so that is an Eliza Simmons of ours, that's 343, from memory about two to 300 pound estimate. I saw it in the house, but I can't remember what I said at the time, but we'll have an estimate on it in due course. Um, in amongst this sale, number of car mascot badges. Uh, a whole big collection, actually, and they've all been broken up into what the hope has been is sort of thematic lots. So these are all foreign. Uh, look at this, GB, the, the friends from the other channel or something like that, you know, from across the channel, I guess, lot 409. Um, so, yeah, kind of fun, those. Keep an eye out in the rest of the sale for other mascots. Um, there are some down here, I've spotted, and these all have what look to be sort of some military connection. There's an RAF one there, of some age, by Gaunt of London. Uh, Order of the Road there. Look at that, 53-year driver. My goodness, I wonder how old he was when he started. Um, what do you get a license now? We don't know. Um, Fleet Air Arm. You know, these are great fun. People like these mascots. They, uh, they're badges, whatever you wish to call them. Um, so, yeah, nice lot of those in the sale. What else can I find in the sale that's nice? Well, I'm passing some treen and clocks and quite a lot of wine I'm seeing this time. Um, I'm seeing a lot of wine everywhere, actually. I'm going to go around behind here and see if I can dig out anything more. Lots of medals, lots of fountain pens, gilt coins. I'm not going to presume to say they're gold. Here we are, Roger's lotted over. See, Roger's so efficient. Everybody else. We is, love Roger. We love Roger. He's so good. Look, the silver is lotted. So let's look at the silver. Lot 1726, the Orla Club, 1892 to 1930. Richard Miller, elected 1925. So nice fat sort of tumbler. Quite like that. But there's three of them. Yippee. Um, each with the same inscription. There we go. Three of those. Nice, substantial silver. Chunky. Don't know whether you'd want to drink out of them or not, but there we go. Lot 1726. We've got some spoons. What have we got here? Let's see what this says. Set of six, George III silver spoons. Now, it's often said that these aren't just tablespoons, that these were used as soup, because of course the modern soup spoon doesn't come in till about, oh, very late Victorian era, generally speaking. And then the marks on spoons, these are called base marked, because instead of having the hall marks up here, they're at the base of the handle. So there's a little thing, which usually puts them as being sort of early George III and, and prior to that, rather than late George III. And these are old English pattern or Hanoverian, um, with a feather edge, feathered old English pattern, uh, no crest and um, pretty good condition. The marks, I think if you worked with the marks, they're all a bit rubbed. But if you worked with them, you'd work out who they were by. And I imagine Roger's done that. So lot 1725, if you fancy some nice spoons, that's a good lot for you. Uh, down elsewhere, I can see candlesticks and model ships and a, and a sort of sprawncy enamel um, dressing table set that looks to be, the, of course, all important. The condition of the enamel. Look, we've got little nicks here and... You know, they get worn and ladies throw them at their husbands and things, so they, they get battered up. But 1705, uh, and then that's just caught my eye. How can I not pick that up and have a look at it? Got 1720, an Edwardian silver and green glass. Well, it's a lamp, essentially. Um, there is a burner in there. Now, it looks a bit big for a sort of club lighter, for a table lighter. And Roger's description has, has run off the label, so... I don't know what he said about it, but I think it's great fun, whatever it is. If you had that burning and lit up, I think it would look rather fun. Lighthouse, fully hallmarked, and there's a, there's a little button under there to sort of sort it out. So when you pick it, I think, when you put that down, something happens, doesn't it? You put that down, something happens, you pick it up, something else happens. Marvellous, isn't it? What, the stuff... The stuff you don't know when you when you listen to me is is, is remarkable. And the still stuff don't I know. don't know. Yeah. Yes, exactly. The the ignorance is eternal. Uh, nice coromandel wood. Looks a bit like rosewood. This is coromandel wood. Uh, toilet box, Victorian. Morden and Co. Lock. Are they silver? Yes, Victorian silver lids. So that's quite nice. That's um 
lot number 1707. Ah, so there we go. Loads of jewellery boxes down on the floor and more car badges. Don't know why these are behind the counter and the others aren't. Um, you could either have a Bentley or you might have a Lambretta. I, I'm not sure. Or a Reliant. Look, they're all there. It's uh, as ever. Everything is here. All roads lead to garages. In the end, uh, coming round the corner, past the dog. Excuse you, Mocker. Why is that jammed in like that? That's, that's not going to do it any good, is it? There we go. I don't know. Like that. That's better. Past the photo box, squeezing through. And uh, what have we got here? Well, how about these? Do you remember Daily Express? Was it Daily Express? That was Jack? No, Giles did the Daily Express, didn't he? Anyway, Jack, original Jack cartoons. Hello, dear. Did you have a good week at the office? Suspect that's due to the rail strike or bad weather or something. Um, there's nothing in the papers. Let's see what's on the telly from 1986. So there are three of these. These are originals, not prints, at lot 584. Uh, if you'd rather drink something, Mouton Cadet 84, lot 253. Looks to be in nice condition. Um, I've got an old car there, but it doesn't look that old. It looks like a model of an old car. I scoop around here. I come to 588. A little curiosity here. A little oil on board, I think, rather than copper. But of the adoration of the Magi, it looks old and interesting, doesn't it? Lot 588. Some railway signs. Not nameplates, but there we are. Sort of more modern notices there. Angle poise lamps. Ever popular. Then more of these limited edition prints, things like Cherie Valentine Dame, we talked about those before. This is David Graham, uh, rather nice, bright, colourful painting there. Uh, that is the old city Jerusalem, and um, there are two of those in the sale. Uh, it's coming back again, actually. It didn't sell the first time, but less money this time. You know, things don't go. We try and offer them again at less money and get them sold for people. It um, seems to be the idea around here most of the time, anyway. There's the other David Graham. See, a bit more colourful and jazzy. So, all sorts of, um, as ever, all sorts of goodies in this sale. And uh, we're going to have a quick look at the warehouse and see what they've been up to over there. Fragrant, fruity and refreshing. Well, that's what they always say about me or something like that when they're not throwing stones. Um, yeah, it's a funny old lot of furniture, but it's interesting. It's a decorator's lot, I can't help feeling. We, we've got sledges <laughs> in with um, cricket what rickets. look to be practice cricket stumps. Yes. And we've got some nice, these are nice actually, I like those. They're a nice teak, unusual model. Teak garden chairs, set of eight of them with a table. I think they're going to be like 184. I think the numbering is in the hundreds uh, next to this, this cell thing. And then this, this device which looks most uncomfortable. Um, look at that, that's for sort of extruding something. It's by Ooh, Antonini. Cool, it looks painful. And it's it, mechan Mechanician Allele, so it's French. And um, there we go, it's a marvellous device for doing whatever you need to do. And then if you don't want to use the big one, you could use a small one to scratch your back or whatever. So there we go, so, so a curious device that no doubt has been identified, lot 31, 131, I think that will be. There's a big press there. There's torsos printed with Lichtenstein style comic strips. We've got clocking in machines sitting on Chinese tables next to early 19th century dresses. We've got the Adams family wall lights, lot 117 probably, check your numbers before you bid. Nice, reasonably big kitchen table, Georgian mahogany chests, pop commodes, sort of baker's racks with fancy leather covered topping, and, and big garden ads. I mean, it, it's, you couldn't make it up, it's all, it's all here. It's all very uh, different and eclectic and, and unusual. And there's carpets and there's pony skin rugs. One of them's printed to look like a tiger. It's all here. So you really just have to come along and have a look because I don't think you can take in the, the magnificence of it all. So do come along and have a look. Old story. Oh, nice carving on that coffer. Look at that. Lovely. See the sides so deeply carved, that sort of linen fold. Yeah, nice that. So, uh, and a good lock on it. And it's, and it's, and it's locked shut and we can't open it. There we go. It's also orange. So come along and have a look. Um, and uh, we're on view as ever the Friday, Saturday till one o'clock and on the morning of the sale. If you can't make it, email us for more photographs. Have a good look at the website. Have a good uh, wherever we are in the week, weekend and, and what have you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you.